Well, I'm Morse Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. Having done a lot of this over the past 40 some years, uh, my guru, Tom Roycroft, when I met him, uh, he was quite established in uh, having worked for the Department of National Men's Survival School for 18 years at the time. And uh, when he retired about 18, 20 years later, uh, it, so he had a full-time career in this topic. Um, one of the things that somehow he was, uh, his attention was brought to uh, uh, a means for carrying weights, uh, you know, backpacking, uh, how to strap on a burden on your back. And there are many attempts that were made where some were better, some were worse. But one of the superior ones is this issue of uh, a backpack made out of three sticks, of which there are a lot of examples of people making these pack frames square or not square but rectangular and so on but in order to produce a rigid means to attach a load you find that the triangular pack frame has a lot going for it uh, tom didn't invent this there was somebody uh, who was a canadian in Korea in the Korean War and this person said that he saw the farmers carry produce, live pigs and many things by building a frame and the frame uh, was essentially something that made you comfortable here but these legs when you stood up they were reached the ground so if you're traveling on a road and you have a whole pig that maybe, of <laughs> all I know, wears, weighs 200 pounds live, and you don't, you don't want to kill them because the moment that you're, you know refrigeration, you got to get them to market. But anyway, so the ends, if you tilt forward, they clear the ground, spread your legs and the weight uh, on those two uh, prongs would, would, uh, would, would take the weight so you could relax. And so as a result, maybe you can go a quarter mile uh, staggering under this load and then you reach a certain point, then uh, you s spread your legs and, and uh, take the weight off your, your shoulders. Now in my reading, I examined all the different ways that you create pack straps. And I discovered that in my intense interest on the oh, Roman legions, they hadn't invented the backpack. As simple and fundamental as it was, they would bundle whatever it was, and then like taking a pitchfork full of, of hay, and this is a little thick maybe, but if you uh, put a, a uh, uh, the, the burden on that bundle that you could carry it like uh, the handle on a pitchfork full of hay. Funny thing, as I'm reading and I read various articles, uh, someone said to the effect that the Roman legionary soldier carried up to 80 pounds of gear on the end of a spear, uh, a spear handle. And I see this picture and here's a whole the, the, the soldiers are marching and the spear handle is about eight feet in the air and the bundle is that. And I said, oh, how people misinterpret that on the end of your spear handle. No, on the end of the spear handle in contact with your shirt. Not at the end of the spear handle eight feet up in the air. You, you, you probably look well enough at, at your, your encounter, that very picture that someone uh, interpreted it so literally saying that. But anyway, the Chinese, they will do this. And uh, of course the bat, the, the, this is uh, maybe a little thick, but if this uh, was a bat to defend yourself from bears, they would take a, 
a second stick um, and it would be shorter and they would put it under the first and these things are kind of loose which means that when you do this you've disengaged from everything but you have the the bat to defend yourself from things like bears and the other stick distributes the weight to uh, so I played around with both and uh, discovered that the situation is that when you would run a course and you were supposed to make the Roycroft pack frame there was a situation where uh, you would tell people bring a hockey bag or some suitable duffel bag and we'd give everybody a simple stick and they would carry whatever it was they brought using that stick and we discovered that if you had like a week-long course there were people who were so comfortable with that short stick they didn't bother building a pack frame between their hockey bag and whatever was suitable and they had that that leverage and and so on so a roman legionary soldier was carrying well beyond what you recommend probably 400 pounds is uh, is starting to be a, a, a too much of a weight for a backpacker in the modern sense if you uh, uh, you know you just overdo stuff because you want to carry too many things especially if you like to carry a small cast iron frying pan and a big cast iron frying pan but anyway the issue is you've got a frame and frame the, the, the load is attached to the frame so that when you want to uh, carry it it's more convenient the, uh, uh, the the situation of humans carrying uh, burdens is goes back for you know way way back in in the history of mankind and when I analyzed all the different conveyances that people were were uh, using uh, by uh, going through National Geographic magazines I found I had a very substantial article that uh, was useful for you to sort of uh, uh, get uh, ideas now that one of the biggest problems is the pack strap so the Roman legionary soldier doesn't need a pack strap because he's using a pole about the same as a pitchfork handle and uh, in the, in the uh, experience of the people in Central Europe like in Switzerland the uh, people that are carrying heavy loads like cheese and all kinds of stuff uh, they would use wooden pack straps and the pack straps were made flat so they would reduce the bark they weren't round like the Roman legionary soldiers uh, spear handle and they would curve over the shoulder be attached and it's made out of wood and it sticks out here and I got the impression that you could carry like severe loads using the wooden pack straps now as I began to look at that from the perspective of trying to uh, create a flexible pack strap I discovered that the wooden pack straps were far more comfortable than the ones bring it brought out by the backpacking industry they think that if you make a padded pack strap it's going to interact with your shoulder and be comfortable no what makes it comfortable is something that's so hard that it distributes quite a, a footprint on your shoulders and if you get some of the stuff that's uh, you know if it's not really hard then the pack strap does that and now you really are far from having a means to attach the pack strap uh, to your to your shoulders and it just would happen that the Roman legions found that uh, they didn't discover the strap for the pack strap because it just didn't go in that direction now when you examine pack straps from Norway for example they really knew that the pack straps have to be hard even though they're made out of leather 
But in Switzerland, everybody's pack strapped, and in certain parts of France, they're carved out of wood, sort of uh, um, the uh, uh, made to conform. When you take a pitchfork, which isn't very thick, there's a place where it can go, which is actually remarkably comfortable when you're carrying the load and the load is against your back. So a Roman legionary soldier would find that it was uh, a convenient way that you could carry stuff and at the same time you weren't burdened with the fact that you get into trouble, you've got to, uh, you just pull your, <laughs> uh, I would imagine that the spear component, uh, they would pull the pole, they immediately grab this pike and they're ready to defend themselves by a surprise attack from the cavalry or whatever you might say. So you're not like, uh, 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 you instantly are ready for action because the handle is there and it's not attached permanently like a pack strap would be. Now in the issue of pack straps, I discovered this mule tape that uh, you can buy. Uh, I had a bundle the other day and the mule tape uh, multi straps, uh, seven arm span length of uh, mule tape, doubled over and over in a certain way. It makes a remarkable uh, pack strap, but it is not spongy. Avoid any type of pack strap that has a foam and sponge in it, even though they want to ask an arm and a leg. You have to become knowledgeable enough that the original manufacturers of that sort of stuff is. Uh, they're, in error. They don't understand. They assume that a soft, foamy pack strap, uh, it creates a, uh, a line of pressure. And if you look for it, you'll eventually convince yourself and playing around, you might discover that the expensive backpacks like Kelty and all those guys, they just, uh, you paid a lot of money for their harnesses and uh, they didn't know their bum from a hole in the ground, you might say. <laughs> now, the pack strap that I make out of the, uh, the uh, mule tape, it's, uh, I eventually was able to um, make a pack strap very quickly by having the right length for my needs and so if I went and folded the, the, the mule tape uh, maybe three, four times, I would be able to put a knot in it and instead of having to tie anything, I would go around and make a waist, waist belt knot. And it was so fast, uh, you know, everybody else is, is spending three hours trying to build a Roycroft back frame and uh, a lot of the time is spent trying to create a pack strap, whereas the mule tape that's doubled over three or four times, it, it tucks under here. And I like this to be loose. Tom, Tom never ever got beyond that. He's using webbing from other military gear and so on. And it was here that I wouldn't have to make the straps precisely uh, long, because if I made them a little loose as I walked, they became equalized, that, that your uh, pack straps would uh, um, uh, 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 sort of become the right length. And, they, and what you have to know about the pack straps is that when you put the straps on, uh, you have to force your shoulders extremely uh, much. And if you understand and learn that, you out carry everybody else. But a lot of people, they're sort of so slack and everything. You've got to have uh, the pack straps are that short and hard to get into that the shoulders are really uh, forced back. And in the end of the given day, you're, you, you still have some oomph left. And the people who don't know those sort of things, they, uh, they're uh, uh, that much more tired. Anyway, the next thing is having enough cord to lash your load on. And uh, there are many uh, neat ways that I have played around uh, using some of the information from the diamond hitch on pack horses. But here, Tom has got this arrangement. 
the loops. You lay your tarp down and then you, you uh, sort of uh, stitch the load on. And uh, it's sort of a, a bit of a pain uh, in, in being graceful without tons of string that uh, becomes entangled. But as you search out the various ways, um, I think we have videos on that, uh, that, that I sort of display uh, some of the most common ways to lash a load on. But the secret of lashing the load on is that this triangle, you put down the, uh, the tarp, and then you lay your non-compressibles and then your sleeping bag, you usually might find that uh, there's some merit in stuffing it into a very tight bag. And then when you have laid down the, uh, the clothing and sweaters and whatever, and then you come to the um, uh, hard cans of goods and so on, and you lay it all, all down and then you start uh, lashing it on so that the bulge that's created uh, is sort of persists. And you learn after a while that unless you really know what you're doing, it doesn't persist. So you got to keep working at it. So when you load up in the morning and finally you are reached your destination, the bulge is still there, keeping you comfortable. And one of the things is the bulge has to come out and this bar can uh, annoy you, aggravate you. You can improve things by making a, a very distinct bowish, uh, that stick could be bowed, or you can take a, a stick and, and make this stick larger and slice out two thirds of a, you know, a stick like that would give you a lot of clearance if you, if you carved out two thirds. And in some cases, in certain cases, you use a strap on the small of the back. So the, 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 I, I have articles that I've written uh, uh, on a lot of those things. Here with Tom's strategy is this unusual arrangement of the cords to low, lash, the, lash the load on. And uh, something I never, never actually learned from him. And then we have the, the, the cords here separately that you tie the load on. Now when you load the pack frame, if you have anything that could be damaged through the pressure of, of tying the load so tightly that the bulge is created, so you gotta, you got to factor that in. So if you got a dozen eggs, they better be in a, in a rigid pot. If you got a camera that might be delicate and you lashed it on, you might damage some part of the uh, camera. So you, or you have the option that you have a kind of a bag uh, day bag uh, were things that you need during the day, but the things that should not uh, be damaged, you uh, you keep them outside. That that issue of um, uh, of uh, compressing this, if this triangle gets too big, and you don't have the the right bulky materials, it drives you crazy. And if the triangle is too small, you usually find that. Uh, that you're not maximizing on the full. The bulge that's created goes between your shoulder blades and then it's very broad. And um, that is a very efficient way to carry a load so intimately on the back, but the curse is you're sweating more. You have this bent stick and you have a kind of a broad band there that keeps your back off in your attempts to try to stay, uh, to keep from sweating, well, you, uh, you're, you're an idiot. idiot. <laughs> Any questions? I suppose it would be uh, a merit to uh, load one of these, uh, to locate a, a chunk of tarp. One loaded Kelly. Do we want to lash a load on? Okay. I, I'm intrigued to use Tom's Tom's uh, approach here for this. Uh. Now there are various ways 
uh, the simplest form, the uh, r rope that is uh, keeping the load on, uh, it's awkward trying to get behind the sticks. So sometimes we use maybe a, a, a foot long toggle and you make toggles and then you don't have to reach under, you just sort of lace up. Uh, there, there's uh, probably half a dozen um, uh, systems where you endeavor to be able to lash the load on tight as, as you possibly can and when you want to get into the back frame, uh, it uh, doesn't take you half a, half a day getting into it. We're going we're gonna to load the... Uh, we're going to load uh, Tom. I'm going to move to the side from here. Now, when you go to put a pack cover on, the idea is that you might have a pack cover that's your shelter. So you have the, the pack frame. That's a poncho, is it? Yep, yep. So here's the pack frame of the, the bar. It has to be on this side. And here we're going to use this to be able to stitch everything on. And when I put it on, everybody wants to put it square, put it diamond fashion. You notice when you buy a can of shreddies, I mean a box of shreddies, half of them are squares and half of them are diamonds. <laughs> So when you put it on, you're going to find the neatest way to bundle the uh, to, uh, the neatest way to bundle uh, is to use my my. Uh, you have to you have to appreciate the fact that my way of doing things is uh, in a, is my way. So you <laughs> you might not really appreciate as much. So you put on the thing on on diamond wise. There you can see the the. Uh, um, you can see the space where you're having. If there's any buttons in all that, you might find that you got to put it a little bit to the edge of the square so that you don't find that that uh, hard object. And so now he's going to fold. Uh, uh, probably the sweater gets folded uh, into a rectangle. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. So, so here a non-bulky. Uh, not, uh, if the things are like sleeping bags and down jackets, they, 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 they're going to drive you crazy. Then he's going to put that, uh, here you can just, uh, just lay the whole. Yeah, I'm just going to put uh, one more layer at the bottom. Oh, there. okay. Just one little pants. But at any rate, you might be saying, I take, I bring enough of non-compressible bulk to, uh, Create my bulge because that way you've brought stuff to help you create the bulge. Now you might put the bulge, uh, you might put that pack that way, or 90, or 90 degrees like that, but perhaps it'll be the first way that you put it. Yeah. Okay, then now the, uh, the, uh, this part goes up there to fold as neatly as you, as you can. And then the two side wings, and when you uh, you put the top part, then of course the flap keeps the rain from getting into your in, into your. Uh... So now you lace. You take one of the strings and find where it's coming from, and you uh, use those loops to lace. Yeah, you take one of those and maybe go to the uh, bottom or top. Uh, no, here to here. Take the bottom. Take that one of those and go. Yeah, one. Yeah, go there that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe take the other one then. 
And you do the same on, on, uh, on, on here. I, I'm surmising. Mm -hmm. I were going to mm -hmm. play around with this. So you see, you're starting to get the uh, the diamond. He might go at the top, the top one. Uh, Back to the top. Uh, now the uh, cross. You know, uh, uh, throw that one aside. Take that one there that you had and go yeah, to the but uh, higher, the yeah. higher one. Okay. Yeah, the upper one. And now maybe I would go over to the higher one up. Uh, uh, and uh, it might be, but something like that. I can see the potential, Ra uh, rather than yeah. toggles. Because uh, uh, if you took a little piece like this and it was about a foot, and you attach it in five, six places, you could use the toggle to draw up. And of course, you uh, you often uh, uh, create the situation where you're pulling. Uh, you know, when I would tie my bundle, it would be tight as a drum one way, but the way um, Kelly has done it there, he's got a lot of uh, uh, the uh, looseness that comes through the triangle. So now you can go there. Go low. Or should we go? Yeah, yeah, go there and then there. And then the one that hasn't been done. And there. But anyway, you'd have to be inventive because you might not have enough of a memory to sort of do things exactly. But I, I immediately uh, realized that Tom's something that never occurred to me to use that approach, but uh, that's uh, those loops. Uh, and so there is uh, some people will create a bulge that's as tight as a drum. But that doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, any more comfortable. <coughs> so you put on the strap. Cozy comfy. Yeah, there is number one that Tom was really insistent on. Up at the top of the apex. Any pack frame that has any space, none of this, it better emanate from one point of view because all other ideas are just, that's a sign of ignorance. So say that again? <laughs> the, you know how you make your pack straps uh, spread, there's a space, it's attached on your strap, uh -huh. that, that is, that is the, yeah, one, one of the things you never do <laughs> because the pack strap uh, comes from one point and that's where it's the most comfortable. If there's any spread, that just causes no great amount of, of grief uh, and so on. So here you're your own worst enemy because you figure that the pack straps have to be spaced rather than coming from one point. Um, this, uh, this notion here, you can imagine that uh, this is unusually long there compared to normal, but it seems to participate in creating more space to get your arms in to the behind the pack strap. So you got more room because you, and you might make this even, <laughs> you know, I would play around and, and make it even twice as long as that and, and play around. Now generally with the making of, of Tom's packs was always that, uh, that, uh, 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 notch the round notch completely so that when you tied the jam knot it stayed in the in place where it wouldn't sort of want to move elsewhere I consistently carried 70 pound packs in my younger days now there might be something here that uh, you know that's that's something I never saw there that is uh, uh, I, I, I didn't, uh, yeah, that's, a sep that's just a separate loop for some reason, but, uh, but this here is, uh, I'm going to have to take notes mm -hmm. on account that mm -hmm. I, I might say I got to go back and, and retrace the things that my guru did. <laughs>